how to invent a religion. I always knew you had to be willing to die to even do this job. You can't stop what's coming. Executive, Executive orders. The creation and the maintenance of a secret you. government. Within our government. It's something wrong. The what? With anything. I feel like you won't stand with your grip and face off. There's something wrong with you. I was so spun. What's the most you ever lost in the coin toss? The law of the jungle, sir. The most you ever lost in the coin toss. You don't know what you're talking about. There's something wrong with All right, happy Lowell's Day, everybody. You know the ritual, a Zoom the Tomb. It's time for Black Ball to really play right here on revisionmedia.org. Had a debut show right before my show, so it looks like we got two shows on Wednesday now. Um, Jared's covering Bloodlines, Frontlines, and I'm always Black Ball to really Quaid. And been a lot going on. Tonight is an open line show. You could have your voices heard. You could join the High Mind Collective. Tonight, I was supposed to have Tom from Connecticut on, and a lot of your viewers remember Tom from, from, from Renegade, from the old days, the golden era, Renegade. We did a show together called Mowing the Weeds of Deception, and man, that was a slammer. That was a real barn burner. So we'll try to get Tom on another time and talk about a little bit of cognitive science for higher functioning brains. But it seems that we already have uh, callers calling in. We got two numbers, one from Denver and one from California. Let's go ahead and go with Denver. You're on Black Ball with Rolly Quaid. Howdy, Rolly. This is Russell Franklin. Uh, the other guy is from California. That's Will. You should take his call. <laughs> all, all right, let's take Will first. Uh, you're on the <laughs> – you like my intro, eh? Oh, yeah, I realized after calling in that you have to actually mute the caller, and it's a conference call, right, when it connects. But, <laughs> yeah, I was trying to make out some of the, the, the samples there. It was hard to, to hear it. No though. country from old men. That's one of them. All right. Yeah, total the recall. Movie, yeah. My parents oh, actually okay. admit, the... we get this. So, you know Anonymous, they like to reappropriate movies, right? Okay, My yeah, parents named me after a movie character. They named me after Rolly Tyler from the movie FX, The Deadly Art of Illusion. That's a sequel, but it was Murder by Illusion. And I got the Quaid. Mm -hmm. That's my, my, my last name is Mick Quaid, but everybody likes to call me Quaid because they say my whole life is a conspiracy, just like Total Recall. But, uh,. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I was checking out the blackballed topics of uh, your previous shows. Sounds like you get pretty in depth and some interesting conversations going. So, um, this is Rolly McQuaid, and that's actually a real name. And it's yeah, yeah, out there to Rolly McQuaid. I used to get in trouble in school because all the kids would call me Rolly, and brought my parents to the office and said all the kids have been calling <laughs> Rolly, and it had nothing to do with weed. That was actually my name. <laughs> That's a cool name, man. It's unique. So, you guys were over there in Denver this weekend. Were you there too, Mr. California Will? No, no, no. I'm uh, originally in California, grown and evacuated um, about 2013. Wait, I'm right, hey, is that what they call it in California? When you leave California? Yeah, I'm actually stuck out there for the, the time being. I'm just actually in Colorado visiting right now. So, I've gotten in touch with Russ and some of the other guys, some other people I've done some activism with, political activism, and uh, but I'm actually here in Colorado right now. Um, so yeah, I'm a, it, I wasn't it, actually at the recent political event, or I should say, gave, uh, gave, gave a lot of moral support for that. And we got to let the audience know because maybe they missed that on Facebook. 
there was an all ages drag show at Denver. You've heard the story before, but this one's different. It was the baby ball, different type of drag show. It yeah, wasn't it? Wasn't little, in children's. Yeah. It says eight to eleven, but it's called the baby what? ball. For goodness sakes, what the hell's going on with society? The plague <laughs> of madness is upon us. They're serving alcohol for children. And beforehand, we, it was at a comic book store at Mount High Comics. Now it's Main Street, and they have actual bodyguards out there. Like, that was the real staff coming out and hassling my people quiet. over in Denver and um, making a stand about this pedophilia, this whole network, and Operation Death Eaters in full effect. There's no exceptions for pedo bears. No exceptions for pedophilia. There's no exceptions for sexualizing our children. Our children are the future. And I'm not saying that as just some line. They are literally our future, our progeny. And we have to protect them. That's the code as being a man, isn't it, William and Russell? Doesn't a man protect children? Yeah, and, uh, I also on the line. Yeah, I can hear you, Russ. Yeah, yeah. The, the rules right, of the cool. show, there's, there's actually no rules. It's just really informal. You can just talk anytime you want. Yeah, I'll try not to interrupt you guys. I'm terrible with these podcasts and radio shows, but I was no, going to no, say. No, 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 don't, don't put yourself down. Don't put yourself you know, down. This, this wasn't hey, whoa, something whoa, whoa, whoa. that was, you know, yep. Don't put yourself down. We're talking. Okay, Russell, yep. let's let you on. The uh, guys like Will kind of taught me everything that I know, him specifically. The approach was really difficult. On this particular situation, we had a you know a pretty small but determined group of concerned citizens that wanted to protest this event, and these bodyguards, man, these like bouncers, they were way out of line. They were all over us. They were hassling the women, man. They were making fun of my friend who's like a disabled vet. They like straight up hit one of my friends with a with a loudspeaker, and it was all we could do to like just kind of maintain our composure, keep our discipline, be restrained. He actually yeah. hit a disabled veteran. This is the sort of no, behavior didn't. we see. That was a that was actually a different dude. He like he was mocking the disabled veteran. Oh, you look disabled. You you know like picking on him and stuff. Well, he like he said he was disabled and didn't want to get pushed out into the street. And the guy started mocking him and like they didn't clear the sidewalk or anything for this guy who was. I mean, he's like, he's yeah. a total sweetheart, but like he has trouble walking. He actually like fell on the way in and like. It was a, uh, I don't know, that was that was pretty out of line to say, no, Mr. Disabled Veteran, you have to get pushed out into traffic. You can't cross this street. The Parasol Patrol controls this street now. Hmm. Yeah. And, uh, really, I, I wasn't actually in attendance for this counter or protest or stand against degeneracy, but I was just going to point out that this this isn't just reading school books to children or teaching them sex education at too far young of an age or that transgender genderism is the new norm. This was lies, um, you know, pedophilia enabling at the very least. I actually called in the venue. I found like a booking number and information and spoke with a gal that answered the phone and seemed a little uncomfortable um, admitting what was going on, but didn't just say this was an all age drag show specifically stated that, they were having hosting an event, a drag show for children, <laughs> and it's disturbing. Uh, I don't know if I could have even been in attendance and not shut the entire thing down. And uh, I guess they are known to cover the children when they're entering the building, so it just makes it seem even more, you know, suspect. I can, um, I can, I can confirm I that. Them. Yeah, they. I, I actually asked the the lady I talked to. Um, if if they do background checks, and, uh, you know, I was trolling, or more or less, I knew that this was going to be my only form of protest since I'm on vacation right now, more or less visiting family out here. And I just came off of political incarceration, dealing with some other issues, political issues. So, um, you know, to be out there on the front lines again, it's going to be a minute for me. I'm on, currently on some proba probationary period. Um, but the... They don't do background checks. I asked them. I asked them. So, if you, if a registered sex offender was to come to buy tickets for your event, would you sell them tickets? And they couldn't even answer that question. I, I suppose legally, but she implied that more or less the event was uh, private, but it was also at a public venue where I believe 
you know, I guess I'm assuming tickets could be bought there, you know, at the marquee or at the window. It's, it's sickening. It's disgusting. Um, I can't believe there's not more people in the streets, you know, putting their foot down and stopping it. Um, hopefully in the next few months or so, if these type of things continue, more people will start showing up. Um, I'll, I'll do what I can. Um, you know, I had people calling them and telling them how they felt and, and their thoughts and, you know, people from all over, people that are currently involved in some campaigns to uh, fight against pedophilia and transgenderism or normal, the normalizing of sexual degeneracy and the LGBTQ agenda. Tar targeting children especially. Everyone has a role to play. Maybe you shouldn't come out specifically to these events for one reason or another. You're too far away or you have some special circumstance where you shouldn't, but you can do stuff. You can call. You can well, complain. You can... Uh, Call in all the support you can. Call people that are local to that region if you catch wind of something like that going on. I mean, that's why we network. That's why we um, exchange numbers and meet in real life and find out the people that are serious about doing activism and the people that aren't. Um, you know, we could sit here and babble on about conspiracy theories till we're blue in the face, but... Um, None of that matters uh, unless you're going to go out in the street and actually take a stand as a man. I, I, I've actually thought about it myself right. i'm like what's the point of telling conspiracy theories when there's there's just nothing that anybody could really do for it you know um this oh, is but we can better. we can do something man i that's uh that was that's one of the big messages i want to get across to the audience is you can do something don't right, 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 there right, right, and like throw your hands up we've proven that you can do something we are doing another protest on the 25th at mile high comics to protest this like sexual objectification of children and you can do this legally you can do it peacefully and you can do it effectively they've already canceled one event because of our protests and, my, and might I add, this is something that, you know, most conservatives, are, we, we should all be able to unite together to stand against this. We're not doing it under any banners or nationalist banners. There is those of us there that are alt-right. Some of us are ethno-nationalists. But this is something, if, if, if a white nationalist and a proud boy can't stand together against, um, you know, pedophilia, you know, then where, where are we really at as men, as white men and, and white Americans? You know, um, I'm, I'm uh, not one for punching right. Um, I know that in kind of the background that I have, that the stomping out child abuse campaign was kind of a big uniting um, mantra for a lot of the traditionalists and a lot of the working class guys um, on the East Coast, all the way out to California even. So, I mean, people, most people aren't familiar with my background or who I am. Um, but we if we can't come together. caller yeah. on the line. Let's let them on and let them join the group discussion. I was meaning yeah. more or less like um, conspiracies is a way to pacify, but this is real. This is meat right. and potatoes. That's where I was yeah. going with earlier. But, Russell, I love the fighting spirit, man. Thank you for char taking the charging and letting people know that they can do something. Jared, um, would you like to join the conversation? Oh, yeah, 100 um, percent. You know, it, it was, it's been said that acceptance and tolerance – are the last virtues of a dying society and you know this is where you know progressive progressivism has really you know it was inevitable when you look at the road that it was taking for the past 100 years and a lot of us saw it coming you know i've been talking about it for the past 15 years this is why a lot of us a lot of people did not want the legalization of homosexual marriage. It wasn't because a lot of people were against homosexual marriage, because people knew that was the last barrier left before they crossed funny over anecdote. to the I have a funny yeah. anecdote on that, on that subject. Uh, a Ugandan pastor reached out to me after uh, he saw like some of the things I saw on Facebook. I don't know how we got connected, but uh, yeah, he reached out and said, you know, you're doing the same thing over there that we're doing over here. Over here, we're debating whether or not homosexuality should be legal, at, like at all. And we're protesting it because we look over to America and we see child drag shows. And we realize that if you let them get their foot in the door, then that everything's going to become normal now. I thought that was an interesting perspective. You know, and it's funny you mention that because years ago, back about five or six years ago, I was friends with a girl online from Russia. And... 
I got to learn a lot about the difference between Russian culture and American culture. And I will never forget uh, when me and her were talking. I said, yeah, and here in America, we have a problem with a lot of homosexuals are throwing their weight around trying to get gay marriage. And she told me her exact words was, we Russians, we don't understand you Americans. We don't understand why you do that. She says, every Russian knows if you... If you let Russia, if you legalize gay marriage, she says, your whole country will turn gay. They know what they can get away with. And if those words were not more prophetic, I mean, you know, I tell you what, and it's, and the thing that gets me now, you know, we look at the civil rights movement, we look at the LGT movement, and, you know, we see these people, what I call sideline participants with Adolf Hitler referred to as the lukewarm participants, you know, you see in these churches, these people in the pews sitting there were giving their opinion, talking about not, you know, how we have to stop it. And you have to sit there and saying, well, how many of you are out there protesting? How many of you are writing your politicians? You know, if we sit there, imagine if there's a hundred thousand of us that feel the same way. Uh, if we could just, if, if a million people are opposed to pedophilia, then why are there not a million letters being sent to every U.S. Senate and House representative in this country? You know, we, if we flood their, their letter boxes, they have no choice but to respond. You know, and this is the point, never ever has there been a time in U.S. history where we needed to be more proactive and yell our voices louder than ever before. I believe so, man. I mean, pedophilia has become rampant. It's, uh, I couldn't agree more. If uh, they're we're, trying, trying, we're not going to draw a line here if there's no line. They're trying to put that P to the equation of the LGBT. They're trying to make that the final marquee, is the P for pedophilia. Yes. And they want and, and they want to wrap this child abuse in a rainbow flag and then say you're very bigoted for opposing this. Were there rainbow flags there, Russ? At Mile High Comics, they put up this giant barricade uh, to block the view from the street. It's like a big wooden barricade about, I don't know, eight feet tall. And they have American flags and the rainbow flags. For, for every American flag, there was an LBGT flag, and the barricade was very, very long. This is a huge factory we're talking about. It must have gone down. And about there's some very and there's some very questionable people involved in this. There's uh, there's known madams. There's like one character, uh, Ripley, Tasha Ripley, who like is a straight up involved in organized crime madam who is now going political and calling herself a sex worker advocate. But uh, she never really got out of the game. The, some of the, the people in charge of these children, man, the people that are responsible are, are characters like uh, Miss Jessica, and her stage name is Jessica Lahore. They, these people are um, pretty brazen about what they're doing, and it's this specific group of people, too. They're, everyone knows exactly who these mobsters are. It, that's one of the weird things about it. Everyone's just so afraid of the, the big gay mafia that they don't want to speak up. Well, yeah, and, and the thing is, you know, we mentioned, you know, pedophilia and the LGBT. A lot of people don't realize it was, uh, I can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head, no, Allen Ginsberg. Allen Ginsberg was actually the founder of the LGBT, and he was a gay pedophile the whole time. The, the pedophile movement was actually part of the LGBT movement from the early days. And then the LGBT, NAMBLA. yeah, they kicked the pedophiles out, and they formed NAMBLA. And uh, what had happened was the LGBT says, listen, we got to distance ourselves from you guys because you're threatening our possibility of legalizing gay marriage. And this was this happened about 1960s. And this, so very few people know that NAMBLA was actually an off-growth of, uh, of the LGBT community. And now that they've gotten gay marriage rights, you see the LGBT community re-embracing uh, the, the NAMBLA crowd. And, uh, 
you know, there's, and as far as the porn industry is concerned, you know, the porn industry has always been run out the back door of, of Hollywood, and the, the, the child porn industry has always been run out of the back door of the porn industry. And there's numerous cases to prove that. Hmm. And just frankly, the community, just the people, a cross-section of the whole community. We have right-wing people, left-wing people, uh, anonymous people. We've got various groups, people, very diverse bunch, actually. And they just, they hate this idea. They hate the idea of a bunch of drunk pedos, like, oogling over erotic dances coming from children for profit. I mean, they, everyone knows it's just wrong. Certain amount of deflection with that, too. They call us losers for going out and protesting, and they're the majority out there. They're no longer that poor, innocent, sweet minority. They're a flood of people. It's like the night of the living dead. Madness has reached the precipice. I got an article that Kenny sent me. It says in Austin, Texas, there's a one of those drag show teachers that read books to children was actually a male prostitute. The name is Mrs. Kitty Litter. Mrs. Kitty Litter. Oh, my God. They're exposing this crap to kids. You know. Look, that's um, really classy. Would you, would you like, trust a gay porn star slash gigolo, whatever the hell he is, named Miss Kitty Litter to babysit your kids? No, oh, no. He looks like Tobias from uh, Rested Development. And these people are in a state of rest development. They haven't even become functional adults in society at all. They're still very futile in their thoughts, and they're grooming our children to not really be children because once children have been sexualized, they are not children anymore. And this is a society where adults don't become adults until they're 30. So what are they for that 30 years? I'm really glad Will's on the line because this issue becomes really blurry in court as well. That, uh, that if someone is a female, if you say you hit a girl, then that legally that shouldn't matter. But in the eyes of the jury, it absolutely does matter. And so what happens if like a big strapping man decides to go through like a sex change and he's like seriously a big strapping man, except now he identifies as a female and stuff and you get into, into an altercation with them. Does it matter? Well, you know, it kind of does. These are these are issues that have never come up before, but now they're at the forefront. Right, right. You know, you know what a lot of people don't understand. And well, a lot of people do understand, but what this this LGBT crowd wants to overlook, and this is what I'm about to say is the absolute truth is, you know, the the human brain is not finishing developing till 25. The the physical body. The human testosterone levels in a man peaks out at 18. A man reaches his physical maturity at 21. His brain finishes developing at the age of 25. Now, this development mostly involves the frontal lobe, which is solely responsible for the development of our, our personality traits, and it's also solely responsible for our analytical and decision-making skills. And this is why teenagers do the dumbest shit when they're in high school, and, and why college students do things like get drunk and drive behind the wheel after a party, because this development has not occurred. So with these, these people that sexualize children, what's so disturbing about them is they do this thing called projecting, and they project in their mind, they project actual adult pers you know personality attributes on these children. I mean, I have sent there and say they'll say shit in the comment sections on YouTube, like, oh, yeah, you know she wanted it, and, oh, yeah, it was love the whole time. And it's like, no, a child is not capable of that kind of thought process, you know. So, And it's, these people have a very, very sociopathic outlook who would violate these children like this. And it is literally scientifically proven, because of the development of the brain, impossible mm -hmm impossible for a child to make these kind of decisions of whether or not they have any kind of relationship with a man and they're physically incapable of reproduction. So this violates natural order itself. This, this violates neurology in itself. 
So the whole pro-pedophilia argument is destroyed by science altogether. And yet we've got these liberals who are easily you know, swayed they... by the lethal, flimsical argument trying to legalize this stuff. And it's, it's, it, it's really the, the sickest bullshit in the face of the planet. And the fact that so many progressives are buying into the hook, line, and sinker is actually just sickening how easily people are brainwashed. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> this is Will here. I, I don't think it's any question that it's common sense. You know, pedophilia is disgusting. It's a disease. It's sick. The punishment. The kind of punishment but it's been for it is really common sense now with this going on. Common sense yeah. implies that there's some sort of sense of morality among all of us. And what I saw was a clash of cultures. Yeah. Well, what what I want to know, because, you know, I wasn't at that event, is, you know, I want to know about the parents that were there and, and how would one describe their personality traits and, and what kind of parents, you know, what kind of type of people were there as, as parents. Because that's the one thing. I, I, I've seen enough material online to see what the, these people are like, LGBT people are like. But the parents of these I, I don't know anything about the I don't know anything about the parents really. I, I don't even really want to speculate about that. But uh the guys that showed up without children that were there just by themselves to see the show, they like put off a really weird vibe. Could you describe them as like general parents and stuff like that? I don't know. There's like a few weird anecdotes come to mind, but I generally don't like to speak for, for others. I don't really know what, what would possess someone to do that. But this is definitely a political statement. This is an attack upon the family. This, uh, these drag shows at Mile High Comics happened on Mother's Day and on Father's Day. Yeah, that's, that's a bold statement right there for them to do that crap. Hey, get this, Russell. So... There's always some sort of holiday, you know, associated with the All Ages Drag Show. It was really close to the 4th of July. It was actually on 4th of July weekend one time, too. But this one coming up, there is a Catholic holiday coming up. And we all know Kenny Bartholomew has been not – I don't want to say leading the charge because this is a headless corporation, you know, doing the protests and groups kick them out. And there's no hierarchy. But it's called St. – Bartholomew Day. This one coming up. And it seems with his name. It's just speculation, but man, I can't get my head around this. You know, the, there's a holiday associated every month, and they always are going to go when people are busy with their families, like shooting firecrackers with your kids or Easter, you know, going to Easter Sunday service. One of my guys didn't even want to be associated with this um, because he's Roman Catholic and he wanted to devote his time for church and mass and spend the whole day doing his Catholic ritual. And I've seen that with family men before. They're too busy with their own nest to really go outside of it. And people really have this idea in their head, probably pre-programmed from religion and movies, that the good guys are going to win in the end of the day. So just sit back with some popcorn and be speculators about what's going to happen, or spectators, I should say. And we really need men to come out and help us any way that they can, even if it's just moral support. And I'm going to be alone, you know, this coming Sunday. In Minnesota, I couldn't get anybody else to come out with me. They're having a brunch drag show for children, an all-ages drag show right here in Minneapolis at Lush. I did some detective work. So this is going around in every single state. Every single gay faction in this country has their own little little nest of pedophile network, you know, that's associated with them. And we need more people associated with the LGBT really calling them out and telling what's going on with what they call a community, because ultimately there should really only be one community. You know, we're all Americans, right? 
why yeah. do you feel that they're they're a sub society or a different society that's trying to take over? I mean, the, it's it's just. I can't get my head around it because you just, you, you just answered your own question, man. You just answered your own question because they're because, not on your team. Because gay people think different than us, and I'm not saying that they're bad people necessarily. If they're just you know butt buddies each other, that's fine. But when you leave kids out of the equation, you know that that's okay with me. But the thing about being a homosexual, it covers every avenue of your life. And I've heard time and time again, I don't care what somebody's sexual preferences are, as long as they're a good American taxpayer, and patriotic, and they like football as much as I do and eat bacon. But it's not true. I would love that, too. But that's just not reality, man. It's just not reality. Like, the, these, uh, it's not us being bigoted that they've made this an LGBTQ like a thing, but that's, that's the attitude of these people that this is like LGBTQ expression. And this is just part of their lifestyle. And they are very brave and stunning and you are bigoted for being opposed to this. What does a bisexual person really have in common with a lesbian anyways? Not very much. I mean, their sexual preferences are a little bit different and they choose not to have a normal what they call a traditional relationship. That's just biological nature for a man and a woman to be together. That's all there is. The, pre the pressing issues of our time, brother. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew this was going to be a divisive issue that they were going to use trans athletics, but it matters to me, man. I don't want my little girl competing against men at track <laughs> and ballet and Taekwondo, you know, I we play sports in my family. I am a professional athlete, and I don't want them going against, you know, a man because men are stronger. You know, boys are stronger than girls, and they do have testosterone, you know, especially when they're teenagers, you know, when they reach that peak, you know, and boys, you know, haven't reached that testosterone, you know, injection yet. <laughs> But they are stronger and faster than girls, and they should not compete against little girls whatsoever. Well, you know, one of the things, too, is male bodies naturally have a much higher muscle fiber count, uh, count than what uh, female bodies do. And that's, that's a known fact. Um, you know, going back to the issue about homosexuals not being like, normal people, you know, when I was in college, we had a few uh, lesbians in our college, and one thing I noticed about them is they are completely obsessed with their sexuality. It's almost like it just stays at the forefront of their mind 24-7. Normal people, you know, a, a person who is a homosexual, they'll go up to people and they'll be like, you know, I'm so-and-so, uh, I'm gay. But a normal person does not want to be defined by their sexuality. A normal person, you know, is like, they want to be defined by their accomplishments. You know, like, um, you know, I'm so, so I don't go around saying, hey, you know, I'm Jared Daniel. I'm straight. I like fucking women. You know, I go up, this, to me, that's offensive. You know, I, I go to the people and say, Hey, I'm Jared Dan, political activist. I have a bachelor's in political science. That's normal heterosexual behavior pattern. We do not define ourselves by our sexuality solely. That's more of a a very uh, minute, you know, aspect of our lives, especially once you pass the age of 25 and you settle down some as a man, you know. Uh, this is not a problem that, uh, you know, with us, but with the homosexual community, we see this thing, you know, you know, my, uh, I had an uncle who went down to Charleston to visit a cousin of mine and he got to see a lot of the homosexual community. And, and some of the stories he told me, they excessive drug use. They're very much a hedonistic people. These are not a type of people that make game plans for long term. They're all about instant gratification. Um, 
he said it seemed like every one of them were caught up in some kind of scam or con. You know, they don't have a problem conning people for money. And as far as their sexuality, I mean, having multiple, multiple, multiple partners is just, it doesn't, they don't even care about whether or not they can catch a disease. It's just, hey, Jared, have, you, moment. have like, you ever heard of the gift? No, I have not. Oh, yeah. Is it you talking about that, like where you go to a party and one person is HIV positive? Yeah, the gift is what they call for people that just got HIV in their community. They have a doomsday scenario or um, predetermined, the, you know, themselves getting HIV eventually. So it's a cause of sec- celebration that you finally got the gift. See, that is a very warped, twisted coping mechanism. It really is. Yep, and uh, remember Matthew Shepard with the Matthew Shepard Act? And they tried to say in the media, spin it, the spin masters and the high priests of deception say that he was nothing but a gay man that got killed for no reason than being gay. But then if you look at the history of Matthew Shepard, he got killed over a meth deal. And he fucked a guy, you know, not not literally, but he probably did, you know. <laughs> and, but I mean, figuratively, he fucked a guy in a deal, and he got killed for it. And he was murdered in a showmanship type of way to try to say, "You don't mess with me." But they tried to make, spin it and spin their little web and try to say that he was killed for being no other than a hem- homosexual. And the media was just fawning over the story, like Anderson Cooper back when Polt's nightclub shooting happened. My people were killed in there. And he wasn't referring to American people. No. He was referring to his LBGTQXYZP for pedophilia. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, <clears throat> Matthew Shepard was murdered by his own boyfriend over methamphetamine. Right, right, and that's exactly what it was. It, it was literally his boyfriend, right? And it, the reason that he was murdered was about meth, and it was... I, I mean, you really got to hate somebody to drag them behind your car, like, but once you introduce hardcore drugs into the equation, that makes a lot more sense. Right, yeah. it may, makes sense for meth users that are homosexual lovers, you know. Um, there's a lot of pain associated with gay sex. I mean, it makes your ass bleed, you know, breaking your brown cherry, they call it. And yeah. I really don't know much about this. Like, I wrote 300 articles online that you could research and look at. I've always shied away for gay people. I try to stay away from it the whole time. And when I've broached this subject... There's a part of me that says, man, I don't want to get involved with this shit. I really do not. But I have to, because if nobody else does it, who will? And this is a topic that every right-wing journalist should jump on like flies on shit. And it's really an olive branch handed down. Kenny Bartholomew really brought this out, and they should take it. They should use this. This is a endless stream of ammo to shoot at the Democratic Party and whatever's wrong with the system, you could point that out. He should be on InfoWars. He should be on Fox News. And it's funny that I mentioned InfoWars because those guys troll me all the time. They have their little dragnet and they're trying to derail this conversation we're having tonight and the manner that they do that. And I just don't know what I could do to get Kenny onto a bigger platform. And I just don't have the power, you know, to do it. And nobody wants to take it. It's almost like they were given marching orders not to have Kenny on. And Fox is going to say you mentioned that. It's funny that you mentioned that. It's not just uh, right wing types that kind of got marching orders not to talk about this. Uh, so far, every single time I've done any sort of activism, if it's a march against Sharia, if it's like anything, there's always Antifa articles doxing people and talking about like the rise of hate or whatever. But with this, they are dead silent. No one wants to talk about it. Like you can hop on any left wing source right now and you will not find a single story about a protest at the Bluebird Theater. 
Yeah. Well, actually, I mean, this actually the Colorado Sun talks about my high comics. Did you read any of those articles that they wrote? They try to call Kenny a neo Nazi. They try to call him a neo Nazi, <laughs> um, leader of a brown shirt uh, movement, and he's I'm standing there with yeah. a person of color, you know, with Vinny. <laughs> What type of brown shirt movement has people that are Native American and black? Well, I mean, the the, the silence that, that the media and that the government has been displaying towards this activity, I mean, that alone should convince anyone of the amount of control that the progressive liberals and the cultural Marxists have over our society. And this should be a, a, a red flare to to people in the right that the conservative parties and, and the Republicans that are supposed to represent us, they have been long since compromised. You know, there are so many of them. There, there's this term in the South, well, it's, it's called rhino, Republicans in name only. And there are so many closet communists. I know it sounds like a conspiracy theory, but it's not. I know... Trust me, I know all about this stuff. There are so many of this New World Order crap and this cultural Marxism going on behind closed doors. You know, you can understand, it's a, dog, it's a dog and pony circus show. That's all it is. And these people, that they pretend to fight one another on TV. Every Saturday, they're playing together at the same golf course. And the same progressive liberal agenda... You know, the Republican silence is consent. And that basically tells you right there they've been compromised, without a doubt. That's why I left the Republican Party. Conventional politics isn't going to solve our problems. I campaigned for Trump. I wore the MAGA hat and all that stuff. And then when he got elected, he did the same stuff that everybody else does. We're, I mean, even if he's a good president or whatever, like compared to the alternatives, we cannot wait for somebody that's important, somebody authority figure, some elected official or whatever to come solve all, all of our problems. This is up to us. Some doomsday savior coming from the sky to deliver us from evil. Doesn't is there a phrase out there that says when evil triumphs, when good men refuse to do nothing? And the thing about it is, I can't get Edmund my head <laughs> right. And the thing about it is, like Fox News, you know, that's what's considered like you know the big source for anybody that considers themselves right leaning, right? But if Fox News doesn't talk about it, it's like it doesn't exist. It's just mum is the word. Are really people that stupid that they really need the talking heads and a wig and a to tell them what's going on in the world, that they can't just go outside their window and look and see what's going on. And we're all connected with social media. And the fact that we can't just cross pollinate and join a con conversion against this and say that I'm against you on this topic, you know, like your Palestinian versus Israel topic for this one thing, you know, we're not going to. I mean, argue who cares? Who cares what the tax policy is if they're, like, open pedophiles operating freely and no one's doing anything about it? I mean, at that point, you just got to make priorities. Right. Usually in the mainstream media, it's uh, celebrities doing some. Oh, look what Kanye West is up to. I, I watched a news segment today in local news where the host did a disco dance like John Travolta and Fever Night for five minutes. Are we living in idiocracy right now? Because I wanted effing news. I don't want infotainment. I want to know the facts. I want to know what's going on in this world so I can make an educated decision. And our future is is all on the line right now. If our children are going to be dingle bats that are autistic and lobotomized, essentially, and there's a connection. And then they're going to get and then they're going to get paraded out in dresses as, like, a drag show attraction. And then yeah, what's next? Can... Dress stops as sex day in schools? I mean, it's a question I have. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, is why is our culture so far off from Russian culture that we can't get something on the ballot like they have in Russia where teaching homosexuality 
to under you know to minors is actually illegal to even just get that on the legislature and get enough signatures or whatever it takes and politicians behind that to actually just get a bill even if it doesn't pass in a liberal um city like denver or a, a state a blue state um to me it just seems like you know we could sit here and talk about it all day and go into the psychology behind pedophilia but you know we're talking to each other here and you know what's the next step you know what what do we do to take action against this other than you know obviously protesting and raising awareness but where do we go from there I, you know i i just i'd like to see the discussion turn to what do we do next let me as far take as this even, one what, and how do, take... is the law going to solve our problem i mean cops i've i've called cops overpaid child molester protectors and you know what they their, their response was we protect everybody yeah i know you you protect child molesters you protect them on a prison yard you arrest somebody if they go and assault them so what is you know where how do we how do we ease the, ease that in that, that into the conversation as right wingers with law enforcement and people that support you know thin blue line and blue lives matter you know and a civic nationalist and someone like me who's a complete fascist and would put these people in fucking camps and put lead injections in their fucking heads you know where where do we how do we raise this conversation that it's obviously a lot more serious for some people and they're actually out there standing up against it you know why is it just us standing up against it where are all these other groups you know you know same goes for freedom of speech you know it's become a big issue everyone's talking about antifa well the only people that i've seen really standing up against antifa and doing anything about it was traditional workers party skinheads neo-nazis and white nationalists you know everyone else and just came out actually in the last couple years you know, when, when finally, after five riots and stand-down orders from law enforcement, you know, they wanted to come in and step in and, and pretend like they, they're the ones that started it and started standing up against it. You know, it's, it's kind of, it's just frustrating to me that, that people aren't standing up against, uh, you know, at least standing up against child abuse and uh, standing together, you know, uh, as somebody I that's think I, you know, ridiculed by the left and ridiculed by the, the alt-right and the, and the other right-wing conservative civic nationalist types. Um, you know, I have three friends personally that are in prison right now. One of them cut a fucking pedophile's head off in Kansas. You know, I haven't seen any news stories of any Proud Boys or anyone else killing pedophiles, but I have seen three uh, news stories in the past five years of skinheads cutting people's fucking heads off. So where, where and, are these people uh, doing I think I, Why is it just all talk? I, I think it might have been my fault that uh, Kenny got called a white supremacist. Um, I showed up wearing a Knights of Columbus uh vest right knights of columbus is like this catholic fraternity you you might know of them protesting outside of planet parenthood or whatever anyway i just showed up by myself with water but i'm kind of like a known figure around these parts and i was identified pretty quickly i have a very distinctive look uh, you know and so that and that might have been why that? And well, the, the problem, problem with, with that? that is that the problem with that is that there's open fucking pedophiles out there, like preying on children, like just out in the open, blatantly, and a call goes out, like, "Who all is opposed to pedophilia? Come on out!" And the only people that show up are a bunch of white nationalists. Why is that? that, that well, that's the question I'm raising, Russ. And all honesty, who would counter signal against somebody standing up against pedophilia or even enabling pedophilia? You know, it's just it's sickening. And it's only a matter of time before, you know, someone is denouncing us and publicly doxing us and not including us in the fold. You know, same as the March Against Sharia rally. You know, when we marched against Sharia law, we had civic nationalists watching our First Amendment be denied, escorted off the Capitol grounds, and they sit there and wave their flags for picture day and did nothing. You know, when is, is the same thing going to happen or, or are people on the right going to finally unite together? And I think one of the big uh, priorities is that we have to get over the notion of conventional politics. You're never going to vote for a Democrat or a Republican that's going to fix this. Unfortunately, this is up to us. Yeah, guys, let's not get into the white nationalist thing because they're just itching to label us even more. This is just a civic thing that uh, that everybody in the community should just join together and hold hands and go against the pedophilia aspect because shit's getting real right now, to be honest. I've seen what happened with Bill Maher, and Bill Maher was making an argument that good thing well, that, I, I wholeheartedly uh, agree, but the first civic whoa, 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 national that now will be in public yeah, to yeah. an event and, and unite with uh, other types of right-wingers, the first time someone tries to publicly dox me, it's going to go bad. 
because behind an issue as serious as this with kids, if people start punching right and and infighting over that those uh, behind those type of issues, someone could get really offended. And so I don't know. I feel like that issue needs to be addressed beforehand. You know, um, what, what type of groups I mean, are going to be offered? A whole cross section of the community is like really pissed off about pedophilia and the notion that it has to be this thing or that thing. We can't be labeled this thing or that thing. I mean, come on, we're against pedophilia. You can call me whatever you want, man. But like, I'd rather be a Nazi than a pedophile. I'd rather be a loser. I'd rather be uh, whatever you want to call me today. But like, I'm against this. And I think I mean, pretty much anybody that takes any it. action further than locking someone up for the rest of their life and making the tax hey, hey with the bill is, is a fascist and a Nazi nowadays. Hey, hey, William, I hate to cut you off, but we do have another caller that I want to bring aboard. We have another person for Denver. Denver, how are you doing? I'm doing hey, great. I can get off the line, okay. too. This is the man no, himself, no. Kenny Bartholomew. How are you doing, Kenny? I'm, I'm doing great. I think great, I'll get off the line, too, so so you two can talk. Uh, hey, good to hear the sound of your voice, brother. Russell, stay on the phone, but you're doing great. Hi, just for you. Okay. So, so I think it's one thing that, that's really important for people to understand that this is a cohesive effort to, to inject the idea of the LGBTQ community into the population. This is coming across on all platforms. It, it's they're injecting into the school system. Um, they're manufacturing laws that are going to prohibit parents from speaking out against their own child, bringing awareness to their questions of their own sexuality. It, you know, it, it's really important that people understand like how how big and how far reach that this uh, movement has. One of the things that people don't understand is that this is uh, they're they're injecting this into multiple different streams and societies. Uh, this is happening in the mainstream media. They're backing them. Hollywood is backing them. We're seeing more movies now coming out that have uh, scenes with uh, you know two guys hooking up or two females hooking up than we have ever before. And it, 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 they're, they're forcing us to accept it as the normal. And it's it's just something that. Uh, they're injecting because they don't want people to question it. You're seeing such a mass, yeah, you're seeing such a mass uh, infiltration of all of our, not just social media, it's our daily lives. You know, you're meeting people out there in the streets that are, say they're LGBTQ, but they don't even know what the fuck that even means. They're just, uh, per, you know, putting themselves under the umbrella because that's just what it's, it's been extended to them. They're, they're not even questioning why or what the community is or what it stands for. Right. And the thing about it is if you go ahead and label yourself a, as a Nazi movement, the conversation is dead. You're just considered a fringe. <laughs> and it's very important that we don't go ahead and cut ourselves short. This is a cross pollination from different aspects of society, neither left or right and an organized but not hierarchical movement of people that just don't want pedophiles to be running shit in their country. In town I, town. I don't know if you guys, yes, Harrison, Arkansas is, is to, uh, the next state to receive the next injection of the All Ages Drag Show movement. They are preparing for the next, uh, I believe it's in the next week, they're about to have uh, descendants upon the city. Um, the LGBTQ has designated that the next all ages drag show contest. And to be honest with you, it's, it's going to spread to every part of the United States. If uh, people don't start standing up and speaking out against it. Um, it that, and the most important thing to understand is that this is not a left. It's not a right movement. This is everybody that has a morality inside them that tells them to speak out against this. This, this, this isn't, you know, this isn't an ideology. Um, just because you're against the LGBTQ movement doesn't mean you're, you know, one group to the left or one group to the right. Um, it, we're, we had as, as our last protest, we had people on the left, we had people on the right, we had people that were black, Hispanic, Mexican. Um, it, this is a morality issue. It, it's not about gender. It's not about sex. It's not about you know your color. 
it's a cross section of the whole community that comes to these things. Just about everybody who's got a conscience, a little Jimmy Cricket on their shoulder, knows this is wrong. Well, you know, one thing I want to bring up, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to turn this into a Nazi issue, but you know, um, next Tuesday, <laughs> you know, on my show, Bloodline, uh, Frontline. You know, I'm going to be reading Chapter 2 of uh, Mein Kampf, and I, I encourage y'all to listen to it, of any chapter, that one chapter, and I'll tell you why. When uh, Adolf goes in the description of what was going on in Vienna, he's going, you know, he, he talks about what had happened, and he talks about how the prostitution rings had taken off, and how they were showing adult films and, and theaters, you know, they didn't have the internet back then. So anyone at any age could go in there. How drugs had become rampant. Uh, it got so bad to where in the red light district of Germany, there wasn't, you could buy anything you wanted, any vice, and um, even pedophilia. And, and yet, during the Weimar Republic, no one did anything. No, no one did anything, and because people tend to be real complacent, and I don't know if it goes back to Christianity and people saying, "Oh, the good Lord will save us. Let's just fucking pray." And I think that's part of it. I think that's a big part of it. <clears throat> the Catholic but, Church, especially, has a pedophile problem. But and if I could, if I could interject here real quick, uh, um, if I could just read something. Um, this is from Marx and Engels. It says it is a very, it is a peculiar fact that stated Engels a few months after Marx died that with every great revolutionary movement, the question of free love comes to the foreground. By the mid to late 19th century, it was clear to advocates and opponents alike that many socialists shared a propensity to reject the institution of the family in favor of free love, if not in practice, at least as an ideal. The Prussian and German Reich governments tried to muzzle the socialist threat to the family by drafting legislation in 1849, 1874, 1876, and 1894, outlawing, among other things, assaults on the family. Right. And, and the thing, what, you know, what I was getting at, and what it takes to motivate people was in 1929 when the stock market crashed, it, it, it also completely devastated Germany. You had a 33% unemployment rate, and and literally, I mean, it's like it was 30 bucks to buy a loaf of bread, and yeah. I think it's, it, I mean, literally, it's, and it takes pretty much mass starvation to, to affect, it's, it, people have this mentality where it's like, well, if it doesn't affect me, if it's not in my house, if I can't see, if it's not in front of me, then it doesn't affect me. And it just seems like, and it's been said before, it takes financing and mass starvation to start a revolution. And I, and I hate to say this, but it's like we're seeing the same pattern again. And it's like, it's, it's, it's you know, don't be surprised if the social engineers at work, within 30 years, we have a global economic collapse. <clears throat> and, and that's <clears throat> when you'll see the rise of a leader. Well, it's and because we have all these right. statist cucks that are still believing in the two-party, Jew-party system, man. Wait, but I mean, first of all, Caller, what's, what's your name? Caller, what's your name? Oh, this is Vinny. Vinny, 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 Vinny,
the nationalists that were against this shit, um, they, they brought it all over here. It, it was Freud, all the same people that implemented this psychologist, pseudo-psychological bullshit um, Junk science. system of, of control. Yeah, that's only been, only been used to get our people hooked on drugs, on more pharmaceuticals, get our people uh, to believe in these fictitious mental disorders that are, are created by them to sell more medications. Um, but, <clears throat> but you look at Kinsey, you look at... Uh, I mean, it, it, the list, the list oh, is endless, but if you don't know who Kinsey is, then you don't know shit about this agenda because Kinsey is the one who implemented this into the very structures of our culture, who implemented uh, through, with the help of the Rockefeller Institute, which is a Rothschild agent, um, the, the sexual education that we still teach to our children. And he was a pedophile that was using pedophiles to, uh, to produce his research that, that was kept very tight-lipped for a long period of time. Uh, but he says the same thing as Harry Hay, the founder of the LGBTQ, the founder of NAMBLA. He said, uh, just like he said in his book, Radically Gay, that they want to uh, promote child rights above the family, um, that they want to uh, get in places of, of, of political power where they can, they can push this and guys it behind free love and acceptance um, to, to, to make this normal. <laughs> but, yeah, but, I mean, appe- appealing to appealing to politics at this point is uh, to my uh, to what I've seen and what I've researched is is, is asinine because just like I just read uh, that that quote, um, you know, the the Germans, the Reich was was passing legislation against this. The legislation isn't going to stop this, man. Uh, resistance. No, and, no, we're not going to vote our way out of this. Amen. We are not going <clears> to <throat> vote our way out of this. Some elected that, official is not going to come down and fix your problems. That is like naive. That is childish to even think that. That's like Will, Will throwing a one of the best coin in a wishing well and hoping your wish comes true voting. That's exactly what it is because <laughs> this is a pay for play system. Ben Shapiro talks about that money is free speech. Organized bribery is how our system works, just like the Arab markets. Yeah, and we know yeah, who right. runs the Arab markets. Back I would in compare it more to a ho- I would compare it more to a hostage situation than a wishing well. That this is like <laughs> Stockholm syndrome. We've been abused we do so long like, by the system. <laughs> right. We do act like conquered people in a conquered land. So we act like we have a boot the battered, on our neck. Yes. The battered wife, the abused dog, that's us. And we, we don't have to do that. We don't have to do that. We don't have to give in to despair. We don't have to give up. You can make a difference. We've proven that. You can protest peacefully. You can protest effectively. You can protest legally. And we can do this. You can even protest hatefully because there's no real law against, like, hate. Like, hate speech doesn't exist. It's a Jewish construct. Just like, you know, any kind of weaponized speech or anything like that. I mean, we have the we have the right to to voice our concern, especially when something so egregious as as you know crimes against children, uh, destruction of the innocence of children, you know, sexual perversion of children. Those are very real things uh, that that exist that that you can't. They're they're not pliable. Um, only to a sophistry, you know, uh, fucking wordsmith, uh, twisting twisting logic and reason. Um, to cover up for what their real intentions are. And, and you know, I, you can see it on these people's faces when I start to go into some of the detail about where this agenda comes from and, and the fact that they've been harmed, that, they're, that, they're, <clears throat> that they think that they're helping when, when they've been harmed by sexual predators on, on a mass scale, their community, um, it, it's, it's off the charts, man. Yeah, uh, what, what's been done to this LGBT community to make it the way it is and the fact that they hide it and they want to they want to um cover it up with unicorns and rainbows when you know <laughs> i have to, i have to agree with russell and, and i think will posed one of the better questions yet in the conversation is that what are we going to do about it like what what are we going to do what is the next step yeah, I think I'm really sure about, uh, like past leaders that have you know spurred the lgbt movement and splintered into this, you know, deranged pedophilia clique of, you know, you know, just sick people. And now they're re-embracing them. And uh, my question 
Um, are you guys all Colorado native? Is everyone here from this region at least? Or yeah, I, I evacuated okay. California after the Rodney King riots. <laughs> okay, and um, why does Colorado not have a transparent sex registry for sex offenders? Um, California being, you know, one of the more liberal states, obviously, uh, has Megan's uh, Law and Megan's Law dot com, where they actually have charges, mug shots. Colorado seems to be attracting a lot of transplants from states like Florida, Kentucky. I've read numerous I'll stories. My I'll throw my hat in the ring on that one. And, and repeating offenses. And there was the girl that was kidnapped and uh, <clears throat> raped and murdered in Fort Collins. There yep. was recently um, a registered sex offender in Colorado Springs from the state of Florida. Um, you know, how do we how do we find out if some of these people involved and some of these leaders involved? and organizing these events if they're not registered sex offenders themselves, if the state is protecting them and they're not putting their information on a, on a site at the least. You know, name, picture, uh, residence, all of the above, um, as they do in states like California, Texas, um, other states that have the laws that make them register and have all their information public. Colorado seems to attract a lot of outside people that haven't registered and Seems to be like a sex offender transplant state. Well, I mean, it's like appealing to the same system. It's it's mm-hmm. appealing to the same system that that we're talking about. Uh, you know, hasn't served us and has gotten us in this place in the first place. Um, you look at a lot of these pedophiles. A lot of these people on the registries work for NASA. They work for uh, military arms manufacturers. You know, and there's a lot of those in Colorado, Raytheon. Um, Lockheed Martin, a lot of those places, you know, they have those people, um, just like Epstein, just like it, he's, he's just a, a drop in the bucket, bro. I mean, uh, it makes you wonder article, if there's not a lot of them here with <clears throat> money and influence that are purposely trying to make this the most lenient state for this type of shit to go on. Right. There, there was an article from about five years ago, five or six years ago, maybe longer than that, um, about the Pentagon and how there were so many people with child, child porn on their computers at the Pentagon that they couldn't prosecute. Um, that's how, that's how deep and how, how pervasive that they have this, um, you know, sexual wow. blackmail on this. This, this, is, this is the fact. We're talking the about that we, gate deep here now. <laughs> hey, hey, Vinny, yeah. actually they looked at it for hours on their computer in the Pentagon. So they would spend an eight hour day looking at child porn. This, right. this goes way, way beyond um, the people trying to rally their congressmen or call and make a, or send a letter. This is, good, this is to the point now where people are going to have to take things into their own hands. You're going to have to spend your own money, uh, your own money doing research. You're going to have to take your own time. Uh, th- we're not at the point where we can rely on anybody to do anything for us anymore. Um, the most important thing we- now is for people, people to take action physically. And, and I think we've provided an effective model to do that. You can do that peacefully. You can do that safely. You can do it legally. And you can make an impact that way. One guy with a, with a Guy Fox mask can make the, uh, the huge difference. Right. And, and one thing yeah, I wanted to add, you know, we were talking about, we talked about Weimar and the Frankfurt School and, and this critical theory that got brought over here to America. Um, one of the, one of the big engines of that, of that critical theory that, that was used to destroy all institutions, all ethical um, structures in society was pornography. And we know, uh, you, you can look at who was behind that in, in Germany, who was profiting off of the, the German people selling, selling their bodies, selling their children's bodies for, you know, 10 cents uh, a pop. Um, and, it, and it was the same people that brought it over here, the same people that own these Internet um, porn sites. Um, so we talk about the LGBTQ, but we've been we've been so stripped of our, our connection to to our ethical, um, you know, brethren, our, our our history, you know, what, what our country stood for and, and, and the people that stood up to the, the JQ um, throughout history. It wasn't atheists and it wasn't, you know, um, people jacking off watching, you know, watching porn on their computer. It was, it was people who feared God and, and uh, knew, knew what right and wrong was. So, yeah. Well, I'd definitely like to see more people turn out for the next event. I know that I won't be out here in Colorado for the Mile High comic. Um, you know, the next time they do one of these um, <clears throat> things. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm definitely going to try to call some people for support. 
Appreciate uh, that, man. Yeah, I, I, call, I, I, call for an yeah. uprising. Covered it today on his channel. I know ODE nice. is going to make an appearance. Hopefully, um, maybe not this next one, but the one after that. Um, there's a lot yeah. of people, you know, like we were saying, like, you know, we may disagree on certain aspects of, of the, in the truth community, but it's things like these that we can all connect on and, and we can put all of our, yeah. you know, your, your, your think, Jesuit rabbit hole aside or whatever you want to, you know, yeah. <laughs> whatever differences. I definitely that you, agree that it's something that we can unite across racial lines are as far as the way things stand with the political divide in, in the too, states yeah. right now. Um, I, I'm not sure that would, that would go too far. I mean, obviously, there's some people that are leftists or liberals that have worked with you guys. Right. Um, I, I'm not sure how they would feel when somebody like William Planner starts showing up to an event. Well, you know? well that, that's tactic. That's tactics that I have talked about too, and it's not even a tactic, man. It's just it's just common sense uh, going to minority communities because I've seen videos, man, where where people are pr protesting this degeneracy and in black communities, and and it, and they get such a better response, you know, because. They, they they just have more of a more of a connection, I guess, to to that um, family. But at at this point, you know, at, at just to some extent. But I'm mean, I'm just saying, and not, when they not start only, calling you nationalists, not, when they start calling you Nazis yeah. and stuff like that, you don't, you know, you don't have not, to not only that, into it. But, not only that, but Will, we would uh, much love and respect your your willingness to join us, and we would stand by you. It doesn't matter what people would call you or how they would look upon you. Um, it's just the fact that you're willing to stand up. And I think that's the one thing that we need to promote more than anything else is that your willingness to say anything, just the fact that you're standing next to us, you know, it, it, that's more powerful than anything else that the government can flash on your TV screen, you know? Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, hey, Will, Will, let me interject real quick. Um, mm -hmm. About the lefty aspect of it all, that lefty, left, like a uh, guy that it's in Starbucks and skips sips lattes all day, he's the only person willing to donate to anybody too. And if we just totally like shut them off and cut them off, you know, we might not ever get any funding. From what I know about white nationalists, um, mm -hmm. very hard to get a dollar out of anybody for white nationalism. I've only got one ten dollar donation this whole year. And it's it's more than just numbers, and we do need as many people across racial lines as much as possible out there yeah. protesting. And I don't want to get called some sort of fringe group because in the society, as soon as you lose uh, you lose credibility when you get called an anti semite, they're trying to say that right. oh, you know Ilan Omar is an anti semite, so she shouldn't be congresswoman anymore. They're willing to say that these congresswomen of the squad can't go to Israel anymore by Donald Trump. I always, Trump I always quote Malcolm X, man. I always quote Malcolm X. He said, it's not anti Semitism, it's just clean intelligence, bro. <laughs> Dude, that's a good one. It's definitely not a political issue. This is a societal and family issue that people should be able to unite and stand up on. Um, you know what, what people need to be made aware of? And this, you know, we see all the time where the mainstream media, the progressive media, is constantly taking up for these people. And it's only a matter of time. We're talking within the next five years, okay? Imagine you have a eight-year-old daughter, okay? And then she comes home, her, her panties are covered in blood, okay? And you find out that her school teacher is a pedophile who molested her. So you go over there, you're pissed off, you, you take a pair of uh, a baseball bat, beat the shit out of this guy, okay, because, you know, you overreact, you get upset, and just, you know, all of a sudden, uh, you know, you get charged with a hate crime. So we're, we're literally in a society where, and, and, and it will come, because look what the road we're headed, where you're literally going to be incapable of protecting your own children from these people. The state will literally protect these people. You'll literally be, I mean, legally, you'll be thrown in prison just because you dared to challenge a pedophile who would who assault, sexually assaulted your daughter. That's the world we're getting into, where a man can't even protect his family. <clears throat> and they, and Hillary Clinton, they're talking, they're talking about trying to outlaw that, which, which homeschool I firmly believe in. All right. Yeah, I mean... They're, they're talking. They've been talking about it for a long time about being a protected class, and we know that's the direction it's going. LGBTP, and you know, I mean, you look at you look at these articles. Israel or Tel Aviv is the the news 
uh, sanctuary for for the LGBTQ uh, movement. Uh, it's like the it took over San Francisco as the hotbed. Um, but then alongside those, you see a plethora of articles that say that it's the safe haven for pedophiles, that, uh, you know, their uh, aliyah or, or the right to return, um, you know, they, they, they can operate anywhere in the world with impunity. They can, they can rape, they can rape our people. They can rape our children and, and, and get off scot-free um, because they're that protected. And we have free speech laws coming in, just like we do uh, for for the gay community, um, just like they do in Australia, where you can't say anything against these people, uh, just like they do in Canada, where important. you have to address them as, as whatever fucking gender they want to choose, or you're going to go to jail for a thought crime. And you know what? That's, you, that's coming and here. And you can't talk about... And you know what? You can't talk about the gays. You can't talk about the Jews. You, you're not allowed to talk about these subjects because of hate crimes. Like, this is very important stuff he's talking about. And these, it, it sounds weird, but these laws, like, are being proposed right now. Yeah, if we don't talk about these things, um, it's going to get a whole lot worse once they have, once they have their, you know, the system in place where, where, they're, where they are protected class completely. Where, you know, I mean, they're already firing teachers for not signing loyalty packs to Israel, um, using government money as as a uh, um, a weapon, you know, uh, financial terrorism or whatever you want to call it. It's fucked up. But it's, it's coming and, uh, 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 H.R. 5. Sorry. Go ahead. In Placer County, California, which is the conservative eastern part of Sacramento area, metropolitan area. There was articles for the last two years on the school district being petitioned by the PTA and, you know, the parents of students, um, K through six, um, over the issue of LGBT, um, being sexual education classes or whatever being taught to kids as young as eight, I believe, like fourth graders. And the parents were fully against it. You're talking about a conservative (laughs) county that's demographically I would say uh, closer to the 80 percentile white. And I was shocked when I read a follow-up article saying that the administrative school board, the school district ended up shooting down their petition. I thought for sure they had it in the bag. You know, there was protesting going on. There was even parents or kids not showing up for school protesting and the parents, you know, basically signing off on it. And the last article I read was that the the school district seated or, and actually uh, allowed for the the new curriculum or whatever and i was same, i was same shocked. thing here in colorado scared. man same thing here yeah. in colorado that was the that was the most contested bill uh other than the the vaccine exemption that they both fucked us on um both right. both uh they had people flooded into the capital and all all of the um all of the deposition rooms for people to to give their piece on it um, were overflowing. It went into the uh, you know early hours in the next day in the morning, and and they yeah. voted against the, the will of the people because these lobbyist groups, these fucking, I mean people, it, yeah. they don't even realize this shit, man. And, and, it, like, and it could be that most conservatives are just like me, maybe not as far right um, yeah. or radical in their racial views, but that they know that it's futile and the voting system, legislator system, legislative system is not going to weed their way out of it. They want a clear separation from this, you know, perva- perverted culture that's grown for the last 40 years or better, or maybe even longer. Someone said a hundred years has been going on. I'm not familiar with Kennedy. I'm familiar with Freud and I'm familiar with the Frankfurt school and all that. Um, but I- I'm assuming that some of these conservatives, some of these conservative white people are just, simply getting ready to separate themselves how serious they are it needs to happen in the next generation or so or our, our lifetime i don't i don't see it getting any better um and maybe that's it maybe they've just kind of thrown up and that's why they don't show up and that's why they don't um get the petition signed and, and really vote well, anymore it just doesn't even seem feasible to me yeah it just doesn't even seem feasible to me it I mean, honestly, it just doesn't even seem feasible to me. It's I, I understand as a white man with three white kids and a white wife, <laughs> you know, like yeah. what what it means to be a white man in America and to be, you know, enemy number one right now for all this domestic terrorism bullshit for speaking the fucking truth. 
because yeah, just being you know, a white patriarchal like, male that doesn't want your parental rights or your your reasons as a white man and a family man and a traditional yeah. man to have any of that influence on your kids. I mean, who wants dildo parades in front of their kids' school buses? Who wants all the shit that you see right. at these LGBTQ events? And now it's gone so far as drag shows for children. And it's it's just, yeah. I wouldn't say it's even creeping gradualism. Like, we've seen the writing was on the wall. We've seen where it was going. And now it's like, well, we've been saying this for years. And now where are all you people that have been saying that this is not acceptable? Where Where is everyone at? You know, maybe they feel protesting and standing up in public is not going to get it done. But what else are they doing? Are they getting involved in revolutionary right wing groups or are they just LARPing? You know? Well, well yeah, you know, that's, that's my fear. That's my fear, man. Uh, I'm yeah, sorry to right. jump in uh, just for two seconds. But, uh, you know, you see you see all these groups like uh, the, the people from Elohim City that they, they were all sheep dipped, fucking military, probably MK Ultra <laughs> people that thought that they were doing something in this Christian identity groups. And then you see the top of those groups. Uh, with David Lane or, or whatever his name is, and, and you see, mm-hmm. you just see that these giant inconsistencies in their character, in their in their ethics, in their the way they talk, man, and you know it's just so Jewy. You know it all it always inevitably seems like it is um, with the likes of Richard Spencer or um, you know Mike Enoch or Patrick Little, all these people that will platform these people that are known pieces of shit like. Uh, like uh, what's his name Kevin McDonald you know like he writes a great book but there's there's mm-hmm. a lot of talk that he's a Jew and then the, the biggest mistake he makes is pushing the high IQ man he, he says that they have a high, a high IQ which is a total bullshit fucking story fairy tale that that keeps people to at, still asleep you know people like uh listening to Jordan Peterson you know mm-hmm. like he gives you like a little bit to, to, to sleep better at night about like the Marxist, uh, you know, um, identity politics and, and all this, all this perversion we see, but he doesn't give you any answers. He's like, Oh yeah, just do your own thing. Clean your room. Make sure your, your shit's all good. Mr. Cover the frog. Yeah. Don't get out and do anything I, about it. <clears throat> yeah. I, I tend to skip damn sure don't join you. I, I, was, I don't want to, you know, the, I, I just feel like, you know, when it comes to the theory of environmental development, that it's really a side issue. I mean, we're fighting for our survival here, so I tend to, like, skip past the whole IQ argument. And, uh, you know, I've, I've read Culture of Critique, and, and I've read some of the Occidental Report articles. and um, I, I'm not too familiar with some of these other names that you've thrown out there. But did you, if I'm not mistaken, did you say David Lane was uh, potentially some type of plant? Or something like that? Yeah, I, yeah I've, heard I've, heard it, I've heard him saying pedophilic shit on... Yeah, there was that video that surfaced when he was, like, suffering dementia when he was a little bit older, and there was something about saying that girls as young as so long were age for breeding or something like that. Is that what you're referring to? Well, he was, like, he was hitting hitting on these girls in front of their mom from jail, like the two fifty. Yeah, I know April. I know April, and, uh, um, yeah, I haven't even really talked to her about that personally, but um, the dude was like suffering like Alzheimer's or something. Something was wrong with him in like his last year. Wasn't, that, wasn't there like another dude that at the top that got caught with all kinds of child porn and it was just like... No, not anyone. Not directly really related to the British wagon. Um, not there, that, not there that, was that just, but, a, but a similar group. I mean, possibly like, like the, the former head something. of the KKK was, was a Jew. I yeah, mean, that was he, actually, uh, Frank, I think... The, Frank Collins. That was... Uh, yeah, I know you're referring to, and I don't know if there's there ever charges filed or anything like that. I mean, obviously, the left and ant- groups like Antifa are not above, like, labeling people and getting people, trying to frame people up, but it wouldn't be surprising. No, I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, throughout yeah. history, bro, like, you see these Jews, like Frank Collins, he's the guy that brought the neo-Nazi movement into America in the 70s in Chicago, mm-hmm. and oh, yeah, there's a total LARP. A, it was a total LARP. plants, and, and there's... Yeah, it was right when they changed the numbers from the from the L O L cost uh from two fifty uh, two hundred and fifty thousand, yeah. like the Red Cross numbers were were all the bombings, uh the aerial air raid bombings. Um they went from that number to, to the whole six million number that we know so familiar that they like to throw out to the media that like they've done countless times throughout history. Yeah, that they had in newspaper articles before the war even started, <laughs> before the labor yeah, camps yeah, even they, started. They planned yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, that's something we definitely got to watch for. I've definitely had my eyes on Spencer for a long while now, as far as being like a government op. Um, as far as, uh, 
Spencer. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's why you got to sometimes be careful when you co-op movements because right now this country is so divided and everyone's blaming Russia for some type of subversive attack on Americans. And so when it comes to activism, when you do co-op with other <laughs> racial groups and other political groups, especially on the opposite side of the spectrum, I'm not sure, like the but all even right. Russia, bro, even Russia, you hear like people like Ryan Dawson, uh, pro, he was yeah. pro fucking pro Trump and now he's pro fucking Putin. And you see Putin's fucking the, the Duganist, uh, agenda for, for, western uh for white western america and, and europe is is total destruction bro it's it's eurasianism and and uh like you look at the gulags like they had they had what was it 1500 to 2000 gulags still in operation in 1989 like these fucking jewish mm-hmm. oligarchs didn't just go willingly into the night like i was just commenting mm-hmm. with somebody today about that he's like oh yeah like you know look at look at russia i mean they, like they they have these have these good things that they implement because he's a propaganda fucking czar like whiz bro like they'll say oh yeah. he banned GMOs or something but you still go to jail for fucking saying anything about about Shlomo so does that mean like mm-hmm. that the Christian patriarchy is 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 in control or is it the same motherfuckers that you know mass murdered sixty fucking million and that's a low low, low number of Christians and, and destroyed God in that country. Right. Well, you know, you mentioned Richard Spencer, you know, mm-hmm. and you mentioned Alexander Dugan. It was Richard Spencer's wife who translated yep. mm-hmm. Alexander Dugan's work into exactly. English. Mm-hmm. And I know for a fact there are countless pictures uh, of those three together. Not only that, but I know for a fact that it was members, Jewish well, and Duke, and, and David Duke has pictures with, with Dugan, and you see him, him fucking platforming Trump. You know, after he knows how, how fucking infiltrated our system is by these small hat fucking criminals. And, uh, you know, then he was asked about it on, on Goy Talk because he was, he was bugged about it by the chat. And, and he fucking, you know, he pussyfooted surrounded and doesn't, doesn't say the truth, man. He's like, oh, yeah, Dugan, he, he, he's a nobody, you know, and like, that's not fucking true, man. You know, like, really, uh... you know how, connected that motherfucker is did you notice how much surgery that dr david duke has had over the years they call him plastic boy and he actually had nose surgery why would anybody get a nose surgery unless they had a hook nose (laughs) oh i i don't i don't I don't know. There's pictures of him that are older than that. Uh, the, he's been around so long. I don't he's think got that, great, he's got he's great got, work. Definitely you know, I'll never plastic, discount yeah. his work, but I mean, it's just, like, I, I think don't, we should leave him alone. Yeah, if my, you look at his letter, he's, anybody, he's not been pro Trump for a long time. I, let's stick I to the know, matter at hand. Trust the plan, yeah. William. You know, I, I think what this is going to lead to is as you see the left get more and more and more dominant, and you're you're seeing the right starting to react more and more. We're seeing a polarized country, all right. And this is only the tension's only going to get worse. And there's only one inevitable outcome, and and there's no getting around it. And it will happen. And this is not some crackpot conspiracy theory. Others have talked about it as well. We're headed towards a civil war. That is all there is mm-hmm. to it. And it yep. is inevitable. How long? Will people tolerate their children being <laughs> victimized uh, and not being able right. to go against a predator without being called a hate crime? How I say long? that at these not protests. Not one second man. more. Not one second just, more. We can do this. Yeah, right. Vinny, take over. Uh, I was just going to say, I say that at these protests. I've said that before. I'm like, there's a, there's a fucking storm coming for you people, man. You know, like we're trying to warn you guys. We're trying to like prevent you know, a potential outcome that's going to be really bad. That that's, that should be what it is now. You know, like, I mean, like a lot of these crimes, man, you know, like before they took over our banking system in 1913, it was the wild. And we used to be able to take care of these motherfuckers before they took over our ability to print our own money. We used to be able to take care of these people. And, And ever since then, man, this Talmudic control, this, uh, seeing us as less than and, and using any means possible to, to pervert our people and, and, and to push this kind of stuff, man. These people worship the inversion of, of truth, of morality, of, of anything good. And, I mean, they had, they had to use a protected class, and it had to be something that people couldn't understand because it was not understandable. There's no understanding this. 
You know, I mean, like we talk about what, what these kids are going to be like at, in 10, 15 years. And it's like, they're going to be the same, same degenerates dancing on stage with, with no, 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 uh, no idea where to go in life, uh, except to be uh, just reaffirmed by this culture that has no, no idea what to say other than, you know, like, just keep dancing, just keep fucking putting bullshit rainbow and little kitty stickers all over you and, and, and it'll be fine. Sparkles. And, um, but, but, but I mean, the main takeaway, man, is like that these kids, that these adults were abused as kids, that these, right. these, uh, people that are smiling out there that are laughing at us, that are <laughs> calling us hateful bigots and saying that this is progressive liberalism. These people were, were abused or, or their endocrine systems were disrupted or something went wrong. But, but it's not natural and it's not right. And, and when you try to promote it at, at clubs that serve alcohol and, and throw, throw tips and throw money at this, man, like you're, you're going to, you're just making it and worse. Thing, and you're going to, yeah. One thing we Go haven't ahead, even Russ. brought up is that one thing we haven't even brought up is that all these clubs are owned by like this specific little club of gay Jews. And shoots. In Denver, I wouldn't be surprised. And shoots. I was going to remind them that Alan, uh, Alan Berg was uh, executed in his driveway less than a block away from their venue when I was trolling them. But, yeah, I don't know who owns the Bluebird Theater, but I know I've been 86th out of a few other venues in Denver that were owned by Jews that are actually on the same on Colfax Avenue. So I know it got, I know up, it got bought out by a, by a Jewish group. It got bought out by a, by a Jewish group that owns a giant hospital here, uh, UC Medical. Uh, they own the children's hospital over there, Anschutz Medical. Um, yeah. Anschutz or something like that. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's always a clear agenda, like just like Chuck Rosansky, the guy that started yeah. this whole shit with uh, the largest comic book store in North America, largest retailer of comics. He's uh, married with with uh, four four daughters out in Boulder, but he's promoting this lifestyle on children, um, saying that he's providing a safe space uh, when we know it's anything anything but that you know it's uh it's these people that look like the bathroom in the flesh with beards and wigs and makeup and i mean if i if i was the kid like just i mean i i just challenge anybody who who is is not agreeing with us to put yourself in in these kids positions or try to try to see this through your eyes as a kid and your parents saying that this is normal and and what what your how your mind would be formed from that you know imagine I mean, being re like re growing up like that and then being red pilled after some other stage of development or you know age of 25 finally you know as an adult realizing and if you were even able to like kind of like work your way out of the brainwashing imagine what you would feel like and how you would think not just about yourself but about the people that did that to you and i'm sure it's rare for someone to you know kind of reverse their way out of that brainwashing but it, it does happen and um, i'd be curious if there's anybody you know in, a, in, the, in the area that could actually speak on it from that perspective um you know because it's it's definitely like children are the only thing innocent in this world and the fact that this is going on and just not enough people are doing anything about it when nobody really even has the right answer other than complete separation well, from what the neighboring is, including our out, government. Yeah. If I can just point out one thing, too, uh, to just to add that um, to, to prove that this isn't a clear agenda, um, you see that uh, the, the first pornography in America, the first widely disseminated pornography on a mass scale on, in the mainstream was was Hugh Hefner with Playboy, and he was a Keynesian follower who who all his all his original articles in those first issues were all about uh, sexualization and, and how uh, children are born sexual, they need to be sexualized from birth, and that it's uh, <clears throat> it's undemocratic undemocratic to deprive them of that. And uh, in every single issue of his magazine, starting from '59, I believe. They, they had at least two to three cartoons depicting uh, pedophilia in cartoon form, propaganda form, you know, just like, oh. just like the stars and stripes propaganda against the Germans that, that radicalized our American troops to do what they did to the Germans in, in the POW camps um, where millions yeah. of Germans were starved to death. Um, but you, you see it, you see it in the pornography and it wasn't just that magazine, man. And, and that went on for, for 20 something years, bro. And, and what it did to our culture with how, how, how widespread that magazine, um, 
and, and, and how popular it was. And then you see it in Penthouse with Chester Molester. Uh, and he actually went to jail for doing, uh, for, for harming his child, sexually uh, molesting her and using the cartoon as leverage to, to, to you know, um, manipulate her into doing that. Um, but <clears throat> it, in the 80s, the government even uh, had to hire somebody to, to discover all this stuff. It's all in that Kinsey, the Kinsey syndrome. It's on my channel. But was was I, Kinsey I just and uh, one of Freud's students <laughs> by chance? <clears throat> he, was, he was in line with all of that. He was actually uh, a Crowley follower. When Crowley died, he went and he, uh, he went to Britain and he uh, retrieved his, his uh, diary, which, which it said that, you know, it contained all of the, his sex acts that he was doing against kids because Crowley would insist women bring ch small children to their orgies. Um, because in his books, it talks about uh, the rape of a boy under five years old is the height, is the height of, of, uh, I don't know, of, of their, their whole um, pseudo intellectual uh, faith or whatever. There's different uh, sexual acts depending on which degree you are with Crowley or with uh, with Crowley, isn't that right, Kim Denny? Uh, well, well, I heard Max Spears uh, explain it one time. He called it the Kia Solomon, and and he he was positing before he passed away mysteriously um, that that all of these elites have to pass through the Kia Solomon or have the Kia Solomon done to them where, where they're uh, raped um, sought by sodomy and it creates a vasovagal shock which uh, it, it sends a message up the spinal column which you know the, explained in a new age esoteric way is the kundalini it, it unwraps your serpent and, and at the top of your spine it shatters your <clears throat> it <clears throat> sorry it shatters at the top of your spine and it, and it creates multiple personalities. That's why we see so many di disassociative identity disorders, especially among the trafficked and, and people that have uh, suffered um, in the sex trade or, and, and stuff like that. Um, to, to, uh, as, the body's, uh, as your body's mechanism for um, suffering that, that kind of trauma at a young age. So... But 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 it's it's very parallel to you know telling people to have alter egos and, and you see it in music how all these rappers or pop stars all have like a a separate character that they play out um, like Marshall Mathers with Eminem and you know I don't know what the fucking other ones are they're they're all pretty Nicki gay, Minaj but... <laughs> as a princess personality dude or... have you ever have you ever uh, read a book called um, it's about like the hip hop industry and all the psychological manipulation. And I'm trying to remember the title. And I think it's by the same author that wrote a book called The, the Left Hand Path about transhumanism. Okay. And okay. He's like a, he's I actually a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Oh, is it Michael Jones? Isaac, Isaac White, Weishop. But I think oh, that's okay. a pseudonym because uh, I think the, one of the founders of Illuminati or whatever was like, like Adam, Adam Weishop. Adam Weishop. Yeah. Yeah. But this guy. I'm trying to remember, I'll have to Google it and pass on the information, but there's actually some pretty good books about that subject. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, their control of, of music has always been there, too. Um, you know, and any, any goyim or, or, non -gen or, or gentile that ever wanted to produce their own music has always met unexpected oh. death. You see, uh, uh, what's, what was it, Richie Valance and Buddy Holly, you know, their plane crashing? They were gonna they were gonna start their own record studio and, and bypass the middleman uh, rubbing his hands and and the same thing with uh, um, what was it James Brown um, James Brown Otis Redding and Sam Cook and, and they got Sam Cook uh, he got shot and then Otis Redding didn't ever get to see any fame um, but like he sold like you know triple platinum or whatever after he died but. Uh, and James Brown's son got killed. He's the only one that made it out. But everybody who ever's, tr ever's tried to, you know, record their own music or, or get out of that, you know, that control. And you see how they took over Germany. They they produced all the music and, and all of their stars were not of German descent. <laughs> and how they, they still to this day bash uh, Wagner for, you know, his, his nationalist stance 
and, and how he stood for the principles of the family. We don't see artists like that promoted in, in popular culture. It, it's just this degenerate fucking backwards thinking and, and, and anything like logical or, or wholesome, you know, like you, you can't listen to music now with your family or, you know, like the, this radio shit um, with your grandma and like dance to it. Like you could back, you know, with the oldies and like, I don't know. It, the clear, it's a clear agenda for sure. I, I actually got that book title up in front of me right now. Let me go ahead and give it to the mm-hmm. audience real quick. It's by Isaac Weishaupt. He doesn't go by Adam Weishaupt, who was the founder of the Bavarian Illuminati, but he wrote um, several books. And um, the one that you're thinking about, William, um, William, I think it's the definition guide to the Illuminati, the symbolism and music videos, rap and R&B music. Yep, magic behind the mic. Magic behind the mic, okay. And he was, he did write a couple of volumes of like talking about Johnny Death, and he has a book called "Is Illum- Is Beyonce and the Illuminati?" And the book title that you originally mentioned, I think he, it's not the Left Hand Pass. I think it's the Dark. Dark Hand. Uh, You're right. Dark, I just Dark Path. It, it is the Left Hand Path though, but the title is the Dark Path. Right. That's correct. So, gentlemen, I was actually got, just Googling it. We got 17 minutes left of this show. Does anybody want to take it into a different direction, or should we go ahead and beat this dead dog, or should we? Did uh, you guys cover the event from another uh, from Sunday? That's what we started off as, but I, I do want to hear your take, Vinny, because you were there. Yeah, man. Uh, well, the event was called Baby Drag. Uh, that's what that's what it said on the poster. Um, and it was all eight year old, eight, eight and nine year olds. You know, there wasn't any like 12, 14 year olds or anything. Um, there was like five or six of them. And they looked, you know, like they, they were purposely made to look like they were scared or like, uh, trying to be, um, scary, you know, like they didn't look happy. They didn't have like, they had grimaces and like, you know, snarls on their face. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And like I said, man, this, this establishment, I've seen concerts there my whole life. Um, you know, there, there's been a lot of a lot of pretty pretty well known acts that have been there. Um, you you can look through their event calendar for the rest of the year, and there's no child performers. Um, so it's it's a you know it's not a normal thing for this to ha- for this event to have child performers. So the fact that they can put this on with a full bar, full liquor license, um, in in a in a basically a nightclub setting is just ridiculous. And, and the way that we were attacked by these people um, is, is, (laughs) I mean, it can't be understated. Like the one one of these sovereign citizens came out with us and he's, he's a more, uh, I'd say he's like a more uh, Bernie Sanders type of, of guy, but he's definitely like, um, you know, uh, is like a constitutionalist type person as well. Um, But he he wasn't real like he was trying to be unbiased, you know what I'm saying? Like he wasn't protesting with us; he was just filming and whatnot. But by the end of the protest, by how he was treated, because they thought he was with us, um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> he was he was basically protesting by the end of it. And, and because these people were so fucking filled with this this rightful indignation, when when what they're doing is it can't be justified and they can't logic or reason with it. And they have nothing to say other than to scream at the top of their lungs. I mean, like he would be filming, trying to, trying to talk in, in a, in a, in a, in a reasonable voice. And they would be, they, they just start yelling. Like they had this, like, um, and, and, and what, like a lot of the staff from the actual event were approaching us <clears throat> and, uh, you know, they, they even came out with the megaphone one time and the dude was jamming it in my ear with the siren on and hit me in the head with it, you know, and I'm just like, uh, you know, I don't give a fuck because when I'm out there, bro, like, I, I don't know, like, it, it's a statement. This is, this is where I, I, know what I know what I'm getting. I, I know what I'm getting myself into, and it's like, you know, these people are such cowards. Like, they have to have umbrellas with rainbow flags, and, and I mean, there's, like, literally, like, and, uh, four, just, like maybe just 30, jump 35, in. 40 umbrellas that these people have up, so we couldn't, like, you, know, you don't even like, understand like, like how badly outnumbered. 
like like we're trying to film like we're trying to film this event when when they're live streaming it on Facebook and it's on a stage and people are buying tickets from from AXS dot com online and, and they're lying about it. You know, like when when we were asking them, they said that the uh, tickets weren't available online, but there was people walking up to the ticket when you the uh, window and and there's uh, you know the website you can get it from Bluebird or or these these giant ticket vendors online. Um, well, and it, be, you know, it became very clear too that this like private security force, this like this group of bouncers, was there to start a fight. They like went right up to his face, like right up in his business, his group space, right, and like hit him with the fucking microphone uh, in the face, like put it right up to his face. They, they it almost him sounds like everything. they're targeting activists. Almost, you guys should be careful. It sounds so suspicious to me. Like it's such a heat heated issue and involving children that they know it has the potential to pop off very easily and it could be a way for them to quickly eliminate some people that are capable of organizing you know right-wing activism i mean i would keep that in mind which is why we have to be disciplined we have to be reserved we have to be restrained we have to be a yeah. peaceful protest and that's all we've ever been yeah. a group of concerned yeah. citizens that are here to peacefully protest and we do it very well, and we can do it effectively, and so can you, whoever's listening. And, and, I, and you know, like, I mean, he did that and whatnot, but, like, it didn't deter me, you know. Like, I, we stayed for an hour after that happened, and, and I, I didn't hold back, man. Like, I was, I was going hard, and, and these libtard fucks that were watching it from across the street, they're flipping me off, yeah. and I'm telling them to come, come, come over here. Come over here and talk to me. Like, if you, if you got something to fucking say then walk your ass across the street and come talk to me because you don't know what the fuck's going on here. Like you're watching it from the patio, you know, like, I mean, behind, you know, in behind these umbrellas, you know, that they have the parasol patrol that, that was, uh, you know, engineered by a fucking sex trafficker who, who got children fired from CU that got, or got children uh, that lost their scholarships, their, their college scholarships because this lady was providing prostitutes she's got lawyers she's got police in her pocket uh, and now she's now she's pushing the sexualization of children with with a bunch of uh, you know of the same tribesmen that, that we know so well so it's it's the same agenda man it, it always is but i mean until until we just show our our disgust for this shit and and don't let people like this uh you know piss us off to the point where you know, we we get uh, heated or triggered or or feel like you know um, it's not worth it so, or, or something so like that. So documenting these pedophiles, since the state isn't doing a very good job of it, you guys say yeah, you have most the names importantly, of the organizers. Yeah, you guys yeah, have some yeah. of the names of the organizers. You guys said you live streamed it. Um, obviously, uh, documenting everything as far as that, you know anything that has potential for legal issues, and obviously, yeah, I got, you know, I got all this stuff to, back to raise awareness. Here. You want to document everything. Um, the bouncer. Well, we're, hope, we're hoping one day that one day that there will be a citizen's arrest, and these people will will, will have to pay for their crimes against children. I mean, because that's essentially what what we're fighting out here for is for people to wake up. We can only and for, hope and pray for that day. Yeah. Brother. Yeah. And, yeah. Hey, you know, if I got a little fired up, you know, excuse me, but the issue itself is just it's that type of issue for me. I, I, like I said, which I don't even why, know. If I which is why ground. discipline is everything. It's good to have your dander yeah. up. It's good to be passionate, but it's discipline that wins wars. We pulled that protest off because we were reserved and because we were right. disciplined. No one crossed the line. All right. And there is yeah. a line. Oh, anyway, good job, I think that yeah, you you did really well. Yeah, uh, it was it was a really dangerous situation. Like those those bouncers were out for blood, and the cops showed up, and they gave this bullshit about how like the <laughs> public sidewalk was owned by a private business. Can you yeah, not that? an easement, not a pu not a public easement. Like he, it was crazy what what they were saying out there. Anarcho tyranny is real. Uh, I don't. I don't know if you guys had planned on discussing having any other discussions tonight. Uh, uh, I, I think it's, it's about time to close. Yeah. Yeah, we're approaching ten minutes to midnight. Uh, fortunately, I do got to close when it comes twelve o'clock. We do have listeners on the East Coast, and they they really want to turn and go to bed, and they feel like when they start the show, they got to finish it, and I don't want them to 
lose any sleep over my show. Um, Got to think about them. But let's go ahead and close out statements. Uh, Russell, do you want to give a closing statement for, for me, buddy? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. All right, beautiful Lord's Prayer. Jared, do you have a closing statement? Are you still there, Jared? Yeah, I'm here. Um, man, stay vigilant, because we are, we are the the world's vanguard we are the last watch and uh it's a it's always a handful a few people that determine the outcome of destiny of history who fight the wars and win the battles so don't be discouraged you know if like 90 percent of the population seems to be sitting it out and it's just us just remember that's how it was when alexander the great fought with his his army and he conquered the entire empire so we can do it, man. We just we gotta keep fighting. We gotta encourage others to fight with us. But we can do it. Very good, Jared. Um, William, um, can you give me a closing statement, buddy? Yeah, uh, I just I want to see this be an issue that all different peoples and people from different political spectrums can can stand together on. I think we de- definitely need to have more discussion about how to do that without looking like you know, the Richard Spencers and the McDonald's and the, the the people that are, you know, we see as, you know, trying to co-op and look, you know, somewhat like, you know, they're trying to be not just a, not a uniting force of a revolutionary guard, but more or less representing the status quo. And I think that's something we got to be careful about, you know, being as people that are leading the way. Um, but definitely, I, I'm I'm happy that people are out there standing up against this degeneracy and scum. It's it's a uh, it's it's monstrous, it's disgusting, and uh, I'm very proud to call uh, Russ my my comrade and my friend. And and uh, I'm not sure if uh, Vinny is is Vito, um, but if you know you guys are in the Denver area, I'll be here for another week, and I would definitely like to meet up with some more activists and talk about share That's ideas. Guy, and but- share ideas. Okay. Uh, Vinny is not veto, and but uh, thank you very much. That means the world to me. Yeah. Uh, good night, fellas. Hi. Good talking with you, Lord Vincent Goistchild. <laughs> you want to give me a final statement mm-hmm. before we wrap up the show, buddy? Yeah, man. I, I was just going to agree with William there. You know, like um, this isn't about politics. You know, when it involves children, um, but it is something that we can use as as a uh, launching out, launching off pad to to red pill people more about the you know like I've said before you know like the deeper um, connections from where this comes from and and what it's done in the past and and who's pushing it and you know and what we need to expose deeper and and what they need to know more um, about this um, because you know like they've already they've already tried to they've they haven't tried they've already written articles you know calling us identity Europa before Russell even showed up. Um, but, but it's because it's because they know what they're doing and they know, you know, in the end that it's, it's the, it's the fucking communist Bolshevik, uh, um, you know, progressive, whatever they want to call it. Um, uh, you know, new world order. The only answer to that is nationalism. The only answer to that is, is to protect our sovereignty of our country and protect, you know, our culture and our families and, and their future. Um, the only protect, so, I mean, our, our future is, is reflected in a microcosm as, as the family structure. So if the family structure goes away, then, then our future goes away as, as a society. Um, and it's all contingent with the, the decline of this, you know, fiat, uh, usury system that that is wholly run by these people. So, um, if, anything you can do, guys, uh, you know, to to spread awareness about this stuff and, and spread awareness about these other bills that are being, um, you know, being passed uh, with with blacked out from the media with bipartisan support. Um, 
you know, that, that are taking away our freedoms and people are, are not even aware of them and, and, and that they're coupled with, you know, Patriot Act, NDAA, um, and, and all these other, you know, contingency plans that they've already got in place. So have a good night, guys. Thank you. They're definitely trying to make a sort of perverted substitute for actual beauty, more a robotic beauty where the transgender po- policy agenda really and the transhumanist is really intertwined and all one. And we're in a post-human society and a post-Edward Stone society where humans are going to be opted out and considered outdated hardware. And we're, our heads are on the chopping block. And I could definitely feel the knife in the back. And it's a matter of time before it goes straight into my heart. And we got to do something. I'm going to open up next week for another roundtable discussion. I want to know what's going on with the All Ages Drag Show. There's going to be another Mile High Comics books next Sunday. I'm going to try to host my own protest in Minneapolis. It's going to be several hours before your protest. Mine is going to be during brunch time. Yours is going to be around 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Is that correct? For the All Ages Drag Show? Yeah, correct. Correct. Yep. <laughs> August so, 25th, yeah. I'm going to step up my efforts. I'm going to do a lot more than I've already been doing. I'm seriously handicapped with money, but it doesn't matter. I got to use all the money I can. I saved up $40. I'm going to put it to a good, good spot for, you know, I'm working tooth and nail and that's the way they like it. They want me to just work to make it to the end of the week. That's about it. <laughs> and I do it's appreciate it. Work though, right? That, yeah, that's right. And we got to do whatever we can and whatever resources is handed to us, we need to use it to fight. And we can't be dense in the couch and be complacent assholes. If you're going to be a keyboard warrior, at least troll somebody. Don't just sit on the computer and just send like a mushroom. Right. <laughs> you know, I, 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 if you have no arms, you can still use your nose to troll somebody or at least make a phone call. Right. You know, we can't organize at the very least the troll army or people to protest this by you know, by by mail or, you know, a phone call. I mean, really, what's going on, you know? Exactly. Because- if you're a rich snob and you're worried about your job, a big corporate, whatever, you have money. You need to use that. And they have this thing called Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. And you could donate to us. Or if you're such a rich snob asshole, because rich people are, not, are known not to want to donate to people. That's why they became rich. You could buy yourself the hardware and programs to to totally make yourself a shadow on the internet and troll. <clears throat> at, at least, at least, you can make your own material. You could write about what you know. If you're educated, you can write articles better than me. Why do I have to be the one that's able to write really good articles? You know, and I got a eighth degree education. You know, and it's it's pathetic. You know that nobody's stepping up. And I really wish more people would do something. And Man, I, I work tooth and nail. I got double the kids that, that Vinny got. I got six kids. And I've been busy all day long preparing for school. And, you know, my mental capacities get weared out. And I get pulled in many directions with my hair on fire. But my kids are important. And the macrocosm definitely matters. And the big picture definitely matters. And I do not want my kids... Uh-huh being sexualized god damn it i'm not going to allow that i'm not going to allow my kid to wonder what they're male or female they know what they were they were born you know with the name i gave them they were the identity that they were born with they're going to need to deal with that and it can't happen in this country whatsoever and this is this is the movement and we need to move towards something we just can't allow this sort of Weimar degeneracy behavior to go on and manifest and corrupt society even more than it already is because this country really isn't a country. It's a Vichy government for Israel. And our politicians, they all serve Israel and their well-being. This is a Zionist country. All our Congress people are Zionists. Even Omar and Rashida Tlaib, they don't care, man. They don't, they're just in it for the money. They got Jewish hands. Control that position. Controlled opposition and Adam Green's pretending like this is real shit with that with Rashida Talib and Omar. 
I saw her in Congress Green talking thing. about uh, Elliot Abrams. She called him Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams, I got a question about Iran Kutra. She never even heard about that shit. And they're pinning off like she's really making a stand against Elliot Abrams. So everybody in Congress has taken that oath and they're paid opposition. And they're nothing more than that. Our Congress people have been handed down policies from think tanks on a silver platter with a big check connected to it. And that's all that that is. And they're all cutouts and props and window dressing. Nothing more, nothing less. And real action needs to be taken. If you're in the Denver area, please help. If you're in the Minneapolis area, please help. Just do something. Don't sit on your ass all day. I'm sick of your happy house faggots not doing anything. Don't be so comfortable in your house. You need to get outside of your house. You need to connect with people. These devices are very powerful. They're powerful tools, but you need to connect with real people. And you need to have real conversations. Bring the art of the conversation back, for goodness sakes. And there's two classes of people that are on social media more than anybody. One is 16-year-old girls, that teenage group, and baby boomers complaining about millennials being on social media all the time. <laughs> That's about it. There's, they love their RVs and their Asian wives. And they think because they love Donald Trump that people hate him. No, they hate him because they're assholes. It has nothing to do. You need to do something instead of getting on your high horse and your soapbox and bitching about millennials. I was born before 1982, and I have done a lot in my life. And there is a lot of bad shit that happened on your watch, Mr. Baby Boomer. And you, there's a lot that you need to be accounted for. And you're just not going to die with honorable discharge because you are the worst fucking generation on this planet and you're in charge right now. This is your clock. It's their clock. Why are they putting this shit on me? Why are they showing, um, Michael, um, Rodinato, whatever the fuck name, lazy 30 year old still living with his parents is a quintessential millennial. And this is primetime television. This is how older people connect with younger people. It's through CNN and Fox News. Reality check. Right now, you need to take the pill, man. Yeah, I know the baby boomers like to take pills, and they love their Social Security while complaining about socialism. But they need to get off their asses, and they need to give us some fucking money. And I am never going to say another goddamn positive thing about a baby boomer in my whole life until that shit happens. And... <laughs> in my entire life and you are not getting honorably discharged. You are dishonorable. You're a fucking traitor. And the society is shit because baby boomers are shit. So having said that, and I don't, if they're mad about that, guess what? I don't fucking want them as listeners. What were we going to say, buddy? Oh, I was just going to say, man, you're doing a great job, really. And, uh, you speak very eloquently, man. And, busy as your schedule must be having a big family like that uh, i just want to commend you on that man i'm gonna go ahead and check out here guys i'll uh, try to call in next week though man will, least william, listening. will william with this shit man you don't even have to prepare for it i don't even have to fucking take notes this is right off the cuff i got a lot yeah. to say about it man this makes me so angry i'm so red i got a punching bag right here i, I was getting up Arch. and hitting it while you guys were talking on mute <laughs> I gave it a good right cross once in the middle of my rant. Just believe that it's a uh, it's sickening, man. It's if I could be there next, I didn't even realize the next one at the Mile High Comics was so soon. I'll be I'll be out here next Sunday. Um, Decorum is dead, my friend. Decorum is dead. You know, yeah. This is the age where left and right, man, they want to take pickaxes and kill each other, or at least pretend they are. Really, the elite are all friends. It's just like the purge. They're going to be in their comfortable little homes with their with their security. I got purge on my table right now, man. I was watching that shit right before the show, man. We're going to have a Soviet-style yeah. collapse, and there's going to be blood shed on the streets when there's no food whatsoever, and there are shortages in food. And I hate to do it, man. I, got to, I want to do this shit for another hour, but I got to let everybody sleep. Um, thank you yeah, very much. Time. Thank you very much, everybody. For some people, it's 12, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's midnight, guys. I got to let you go. 
um, so that you can get some healthy sleep. And we'll reconvene. We'll be back here next week. I hope the roundtable will be back here to talk about what happened this coming Sunday. Thank you so very much for Richard for giving us the time um, to convene and have some sort of communal um work and consensus among us about what's going on in the world right now and being able to do something about it and have a voice. And thank you very much, Richard and revision media, Jared, uh, Kenny, William Russell, and um, of course, Lord Vincent. Have a good night folks. And this is black ball, Rolly Quaid. Have a good night folks. How to invent a religion. I always knew you had to be willing to die to even do this job. You can't stop that to come. Executive the orders. The creation and the maintenance of a secret government within our government. Is it wrong? The what? With anything. You feel like you won't stand with your grip and face off. There's something wrong with everything. I was so spun. What's the most you ever lost in the Quintus? The law of the jungle. The most you ever lost. The context. You don't know what you're talking about. Suppression of unrest and dissent. Domestic anti terrorism. I don't have some way to put it. That's the way it is.